This video is sponsored by Electronic Arts. In a world that has many epic battles and mythical creatures, there exists a tale of a war of courageous dwarves taking on fearsome orcs. Welcome, fellow adventurers, to this journey into Middle-earth as we uncover the goings-on from the war of the dwarves and orcs. Remember everyone, if you find this video helpful, informative or entertaining today, please remember to hit that subscribe button below. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on any of our latest videos and you'll be supporting us to continue creating great content like this. The War of the Dwarves and Orcs was a very costly war for the Dwarven race. It all started when a dragon most of you will be familiar with named Smaug found out about the treasures in Erebor and attacked the city. As a result, the dwarves of Jurin's folk lost their home and became wanderers in Middle-earth. Not only did they lose their homes, but also their riches that attracted Smaug in the first place. They had to start from scratch and find a new place to live. Eventually, a bunch of them settled in Dunland, a wild area northwest of Rohan between two rivers, the Gwathlo and the Eisen. Some notable dwarves who stayed there were King Thror, his son Thrain II, and his grandson Thorin Oakenshield. Yes, you will recognise those names. In Dunland, they worked hard to rebuild their lives and find success once again. It was a story of determination and bravery as these dwarves faced challenges in the tough lands of Middle-earth, but they never gave up. The Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle-earth is a captivating CRPG from Capital Games and EA that invites you to embark on an epic journey through Middle-earth where you can immerse yourself in the timeless tales you adore while uncovering new narratives inspired by Tolkien's extraordinary works. The legendary figure Alrond is set to join the ranks of Heroes of Middle-earth very soon, so be sure to collect your 5 Alvin characters needed before his event starts on June the 26th for that chance to unlock him. Alrond is a support hybrid, meaning not only can he heal his allies, but only Alrond can revive fellow elves that have fallen in battle, or even summon the Bruinin for a powerful multi-target attack that does bonus damage against shadow units. Do you want new characters? Well, these are regularly introduced to put your expanding roster to the test. Brace yourself for the arrival of legendary heroes, renowned for their awe-inspiring feats in Middle-earth. And not just that, because each month prepare to collect fresh characters through all of these legendary adventures. To get the legendary characters, you need to play these limited time legendary adventures events, as it will give you the opportunity to upgrade and unlock these powerful characters that we all know and love. These legendary adventures may return in the future, but are only available for a short time, so make sure you are prepared. However, even if you do miss Alrond's legendary adventure event, there are still tons of exciting Lord of the Rings characters to collect and stories to explore. It is time to go on your adventure. Download Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle-earth for free using the link in the description or by scanning the QR code with your phone. As the years passed, the dwarves couldn't find true satisfaction in their new way of life, especially Thror. He despised the poverty and grew increasingly disheartened about his people's situation. It is said that this despair was amplified by the influence of the Ring of Power that he possessed and wore too. This discontent pushed him further away from his kin until, in 2790, he made a fateful decision. Without an army or his family, Thror resolved to depart and gaze upon the magnificent halls of his ancestors once again the legendary realm of khazad His sole companion on this journey was his friend, Nar. To reach Moria, they took the path of the Redhorn Pass, arriving in the end at the Eastern Gate. Nar, for one final time, warned Thror not to venture inside the mines, but Thror turned a deaf ear. Driven by his own determination, he entered alone. Days passed, and Nar grew anxious, fearing the worst. Unfortunately, his fears were well-founded. Thrall had been captured and brutally slain by another being who most of you will recognise, the Orc Chieftain, Azog. Before casting his lifeless body from the gate, Azog cruelly marked Thrall's head with his own name, a savage warning. However, Nar was not subjected to the same treatment, as the Orcs intended to use Nar to spread the message that khazad was now under Azog's rule. Who? 
in fact, declared himself as King of Moria. Filled with terror, Nar raced back to his people, delivering the devastating news to Thrall's son, Thrain. Such was the tale that Nar brought back to Thrain, and when he had wept and torn his beard, he fell silent. Seven days he sat and said no word. Then he stood up and said, This cannot be borne. That was the beginning of the War of the Dwarves and Orcs, which was long and deadly, and fought for the most part in deep places beneath the earth. We were leaderless. Defeat and death were upon us. From the year 2790, for the span of three years, Durin's folk, also known as the Longbeards, rallied their forces to confront the Orcs. During this time, they sought the support of all the other Dwarven houses, calling upon their alliances. By 2793, the Dwarven army was prepared and marched for war. It is said, although we cannot be 100% sure, that warriors from all the other houses of the Dwarves joined their cause. The Stiffbeards, the Stonefoots, the Broadbeams, the Firebeards, the Ironfists, and the Blacklock all united by the dishonour inflicted upon their people by Azog's heinous acts against the rightful heir of Durin's folk. The fury that filled every dwarf was immeasurable. Details of the early battles are scarce, but what we do know is that the dwarven army advanced from Gundabad to the Gladden, laying waste to orc strongholds all along the way. Both sides engaged in brutal and merciless combat as the nature of the orcs dictated. The dwarves, armed with superior weaponry and fueled by an unyielding resolve, showed no mercy to their enemies, with several orcs fleeing from their wrath. They relentlessly searched for Azog in each stronghold that they captured, but their efforts were in vain until they finally reached Moria. It was there that the surviving orcs had gathered and prepared for a climactic final confrontation, the Battle of Azanul Bizarre. At last, all the orcs that fled before them were gathered in Moria, and the dwarf host in pursuit came to Azanol Bizarre. That was a great veil that lay between the arms of the mountains about the lake of Keled Zoram, and had been of old part of the kingdom of khazad When the dwarves saw the gate of their ancient mansions up upon the hillside, they sent up a great shout like thunder in the valley. But a great host of foes was arrayed on the slopes above them and out of the gates poured a multitude of orcs that had been held back by Azog for the last need. At first fortune was against the dwarves, for it was a dark day of winter without sun, and the orcs did not waver, and they outnumbered their enemies, and had the higher ground. So began the Battle of Azanol Bizarre, or Nanduhirion in the Alvish tongue, at the memory of which the orcs still shudder and the dwarves weep. The first assault of the vanguard led by Thrain was thrown back with loss, and Thrain was driven into a wood of great trees that then still grew not far from Keled Zoram. There Frerin his son fell, and Fundin his kinsman, and many others, and both Thrain and Thorin were wounded. Elsewhere the battle swayed to and fro with great slaughter, until at last the people of the Iron Hills turned the day. Coming late and fresh to the field, the mailed warriors of Nain, Gror's son, drove through the orcs to the very threshold of Moria, crying, Azog! Azog! as they hewed down with their mattocks all who stood in their way. Their names stood before the gate and cried with a great voice, Azog, if you are in, come out, or is the play in the valley too rough? At that moment, Azog seized his opportunity to step forward. This formidable orc chieftain, accompanied by his fierce bodyguards, was swift and powerful. Their primary objective was to challenge Nain, with Azog taunting him, daring him to mark him as well. Consumed by rage, Nain charged at Azog, his fury blinding him to the perilous situation. However, Azog was still fresh and agile, and he proved too swift for the battle-weary Nain. With a devastating strike, Azog delivered a blow so severe that it snapped Nain's neck, ending the noble dwarf's life. Yet, as this fateful duel unfolded, the tide turned on the battlefield. The dwarves surged forward, overwhelming the orc host. Realizing his army was on the verge of defeat, Azog sought to escape. He made a desperate dash toward the gates of Moria, but his flight was not uncontested. Dane Ironfoot, yes that same Dane Ironfoot from the Hobbit tale, at this time a valiant young dwarf who was the son of Nain, 
pursued the orc chieftain with his red axe held high. Fueled by an unmatched dwarf's fury, Dane swiftly caught up to Azog at the very entrance of Moria, delivering a decisive strike that severed the orc's head from his body. It was done. The battle was won. The dwarves emerged victorious, their triumph resounding throughout the land. Your song that night for our dead were beyond the count of grief. With the war coming to its end, Thrain, forever blinded from the final battle, yearned to press forward and reclaim khazad in its entirety. However, his dwindled forces, now less than half of what they were before the conflict, doubted their ability to hold the realm if they were to claim it. They believed it was wiser to return to their respective homelands and recover. Even Thrain's own king shared this sentiment. Dane, while pledging to fight alongside Thrain, refused to enter khazad himself. He had caught a glimpse of Jurin's bane, a fearsome, evil creature, a Balrog, when he peered through the gate's shadow after slaying Azok. Dane insisted that the world must change, and a power greater than theirs must come forth before Durin's folk could truly reclaim Moria. Instead, they dedicated their time to gathering the fallen and honouring them with solemn pyres. The flames from these funeral rites blazed so fiercely that even the elves of Lorien could see the mournful spectacle. Following this war, it would take until the events that take place in the Hobbit adventure around the year 2941, specifically during the Battle of Five Armies, for the Orcs in the North to regain any significant strength. The losses they had suffered throughout those years had greatly depleted their numbers. Although, maybe for the forces of good, not quite depleted enough. Our enemy had been defeated. So there we have it, a run through of the events of the War of the Dwarves and Orcs. A story of the courage and determination of the Dwarven race in the face of overwhelming odds. From the loss of their home to the brutal slaying of their king, the Dwarves rallied their forces and engaged in a fierce war against the Orcs. They fought valiantly in the Battle of Azanul Bizar, ultimately emerging victorious. Though they couldn't reclaim khazad they honoured their fallen and focused on healing. This war's impact was significant, crippling the orcs for years to come. The War of the Dwarves and Orcs stands as a testament to the dwarves' unwavering spirit and the bonds that unite them. With that now though, it is time for my question of the day, which is, how do you feel about the alterations that were made to this by Peter Jackson for the Hobbit trilogy? Do you consider it a bit of a disgrace, or can you understand why it was done for the story that he told? Maybe in fact you prefer the changes? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section down below. And of course, thank you once again to Electronic Arts for sponsoring this video. And now to shout out our patrons. You guys have been amazing in supporting our short film project. We have got some amazing updates coming soon. We are really making good progress and I cannot thank you all enough. We have the Divine Power tier member of Kevin, the Fire Demon tier member of Nasheath, and the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, and Hunter. You are all true legends of the Bro Hiram. Finally, I really appreciate your time in watching this video today. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon with notifications enabled so that you will get notified when all future videos are released. Thank you once again for your support, and I look forward to seeing you next time on The Broken Sword.